All right, so Virgin Galactic is making a huge move, one that could totally change the game for commercial space travel. Today, we're going to take a look inside their next generation spaceship, the Delta Class, and you'll see it's not just some minor upgrade. No, this is a complete rethink of how we get to the edge of space. You know, this quote from Virgin Galactic CEO Michael Kolgleiser really says it all. When he talks about commercial service, that's not just corporate speak. It's a signal of a massive shift in thinking. This isn't a science project anymore. The goal now is to build a real, sustainable business. And the Delta class? Well, that's the key to making it all happen. Okay, so what exactly is this new fleet? Well, they're called the Delta class. And this is an entirely new line of suborbital space planes that are designed to really completely change the future for Virgin Galactic. And here's what's so smart about this. It has a dual purpose, and that's absolutely key. See, these aren't just joyrides for tourists. The Delta class is being built to serve two totally different markets. On one hand, you've got private astronauts who want that incredible view from space. On the other, you have scientific institutions that are desperate for a reliable lab in microgravity. That versatility, that's the very core of their business plan. But you might be wondering, why build a whole new fleet? I mean, why not just keep flying the ship they already have? Well, it's because that original spaceship, as cool as it was, had a really big limitation, one that was holding them back from becoming a true space line. And here it is, the big bottleneck. Their pioneering ship, VSS Unity, was an incredible piece of engineering, no doubt about it. But it just couldn't fly very often. And if you want to build a big business, you've got to fly a lot of people a lot more often. That's just not what Unity was designed to do. And this is where you really see the scale of what they're trying to do. Just look at this difference. VSS Unity, at its best, it could maybe do one flight a month. The goal for the new Delta-class fleet? A whopping eight missions in that same amount of time. That's not just an improvement, it's an exponential leap. Let me put it another way. That massive jump in flights translates to a 12-fold increase in how many people or payloads they can fly each month. 12 times the astronauts, 12 times the science experiments. That single number, 12x, that's what could finally turn Virgin Galactic from a cool novelty into an actual transportation system. So this really is the heart of the story. They're trying to move from being a boutique operation, you know, with one really special handcrafted vehicle, to becoming a true space line. And the goal with the Delta fleet isn't just about more flights. It's about creating a flight schedule that's more like an airline, with a cost structure that actually works, one that lets them scale up and repeat the process over and over again. So the big question is, how do you even build a fleet of spaceships like this? All right, let's pull back the curtain and see how these things are actually being put together. Well, believe it or not, the process is already well underway. The major parts are being built right now by specialized partners. We're talking about the wing assembly for the first ship, which should be done in late 2025. Then right after that, the fuselage comes together in early 2026, and it all meets up for final assembly at Virgin's brand new factory down in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, but one of the absolute coolest and most important innovations is something called the feathering system. So imagine this. For re-entry, the pilot literally just flips a switch. The tail booms of the spacecraft pivot straight up, and just like that, the whole vehicle turns into a giant, super stable shuttlecock. It uses the air itself as a brake, slowing down for a really safe, controlled glide all the way back to the runway. It's this brilliant piece of safety tech that's baked right into the very design of the ship. So we know how they're being built. But the question on everyone's mind is when are these things actually going to fly? Let's take a look at the timeline for getting the Delta class from the factory floor into commercial service. Okay, so as we saw, the major parts are coming together through late 2025 and into early 2026. After that, the ships go into a really tough flight test program. I mean, they've got to prove everything works perfectly. And it's all building towards this one big goal commercial service for both the private astronauts and the scientists is scheduled to kick off in the fall of 2026. But it's really important to get this. A higher flight rate isn't just about space tourism. It's about something much, much bigger. It unlocks a whole new business model for the company. Having this big fleet, it just opens up so many new doors. They're looking at using the mothership itself as a launch platform for other things, kind of like what they're doing with the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. They're also thinking about going global, maybe with a second spaceport over in Italy. And maybe the most important part? They can finally give the scientific community what it's been asking for for years. Frequent, reliable, and affordable trips to space for their research. So, 
all of this leaves us with one final really big question. For years, decades even, routine access to space has felt like it's just around the corner, right? Always just a few years away. So with a fleet that's designed to fly more like an airline, could the Delta class finally be the thing that turns that dream of an everyday spaceline into a reality? I guess we'll all be watching very closely in 2026 to find out. 